Today we're going to look at some tricky JavaScript code, and for each one, what I want you to do is try to figure out what the code is going to output and why. Then of course we'll go over each one together. Now admittedly, these are some fairly contrived examples. However, they're meant to illustrate specific points, and the idea is that if you can understand each of these examples in great detail, then you probably have a pretty strong understanding of JavaScript as a whole. So let's take a look at the first example. So here we have an object with a name and a get name property. So name is Connor and get name is this function that returns this dot name. Then we have get name that we get off of the object and we console.log a call to get name. So you might think, okay, so this calls this function, which returns this.name, which is Connor. But actually we're going to get undefined. So why is this? Well, if instead of just calling get name, we did obj.getName, well then we get Connor. So what's happening here is that when we do obj dot, this dot notation is going to bind the this keyword to whatever's before the dot. So this entire object, and then this dot name is of course Connor. But when there is no dot notation and we just call the function, well, now it doesn't know what this is. So this just becomes the global object, which has no name property, and thus it's undefined. JavaScript arrays probably don't work how you expect. So here we have an array with foo and bar. And then we say array at 10, that's going to be baz. You might be saying, okay, array at 10, that has to be like out of bounds or some kind of error, right? Right, JavaScript, please. Then we log out the array and we log out the length of the array, fine. And then we set the length of the array to just be one, whatever that does. And then we log out the array again. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, first of all, add Baz in the actual 10 slot, and then just add these empty items as sort of placeholders between them. So that means the length is now 11, even though there's nothing in between Baz and Foo and Bar. And then we change the array length, which is actually an editable property. So what this does is it just chops off everything after that because, well, now the length is only one. So now all we have is just foo. Here we have some JavaScript addition, but with strings and numbers. So what's going to happen? Well, we have three plus four plus five and five is a string, but we're going to go from left to right. So first three plus four, that's of course seven. Now we have seven plus five, but five is a string. So whenever you have addition with a string, it's not actually addition. That plus sign is concatenation. So because of this, this is going to be treated as a string and we have seven plus five as strings or the string seven five, which is the string of 75. Here we define X two times. So what's going to happen? So we have X equals one. And then we have this foo function where we set X to be two and we log out X. But then outside of foo, we also log out X again. So what's going to happen is we log two then one. So inside of foo, we have x equals two and we log out x. And we still have access to x equals one here. However, whenever we are accessing some variable like we are in console.log here, it's going to look sort of to a chain of variables. First, it looks to the local variables and says, okay, is there an x here? And there is, so we use just that local one. However, if there was no local x, then it would look to the globals. So in this case, we just use two. But then down here, we log out whatever x we have. And in this case, we don't have access to the function. So the only x we have is this global one. However, what's also worth noting is that because we used let here, we are declaring a new x. We are not redefining the existing one. So that's why we still have one. However, if we didn't have let and we just said x equals two, well, this would actually change the global x. So now we would get two and then two. Can you figure out what this array function is going to do to this array? So we have the array of one, two, three, four, five. Then we call the splice function on it, passing in two, one, and then the string of the word one and the string of the word two, then we log out the array. So what's going to happen here? Well, we end up getting one, two, then the strings one and two, and then four, five. So what actually happens is splice, first of all, is going to affect the original array. So it doesn't return a new array, it changes the original one. So it doesn't matter that we're not saving the result in anything. So first of all, splice takes in an index. So index two is this three here. And then it takes in a number of elements to remove. So it removes one element. So it removes this three. And then anything we pass in after that is going to put in the array in replacement of the three. So we get one, two, and then these two strings, and then four, five. What's going to be the order of these console logs? So we have console log of one, and then a set timeout with console log of two, but a zero millisecond delay, and then console log of three. So you might be saying, okay, we log out one and then a zero millisecond delay that does nothing. So we log out two, and then we log out three, but this isn't actually the case. We get one, three, and then two. So what's happening here? Well, this has to do with something known as the event loop and just the fact that JavaScript is single threaded, meaning only one thing can happen at a time. So first we log out one, that's self-explanatory. Then set timeout says, okay, after zero milliseconds, queue up this code to run. 
but that's the key word there. Queue up this code to run. It doesn't run it immediately because we can't just interrupt something else that's happening. So after zero milliseconds, it says, okay, now we can run this code, but zero milliseconds is just going to be a minimum delay, not an exact delay. So once we are able to run this code, run it. But we still have other code from the main execution thread that's running, specifically console log of 30. So until the call stack is empty, this set timeout code can't run. So console log of three runs and then the call stack is empty. So now this code can move from that sort of message queue as we call it into the main call stack to actually be executed. And console log of two happens after three. What even is this JavaScript syntax and what's it going to output? So we have const a, which we set equal to one, two, three, but these are parentheses. This is not an array. And then we have console log of a. So you might think, okay, maybe this is like an array, maybe it's some kind of tuple, something like that. But nope, that's not what it is, it's just JavaScript. So in this case, what's happening is this is known as the comma operator, so we're actually going to get three. And what happens when you use the comma operator, which just allows you to have multiple comma separated expressions, they are all going to execute. So if this was some function call, that call would actually execute, but then it's just going to return the last value, which in this case is the three, so that's why a is set to three. Here we have a few objects and we're checking the equality of different objects. So what's going to happen? So we have const obj1, which we set equal to this object with a value of 10. Then we have obj2, which we set equal to obj1. And then we have obj3, which we set equal to another object with a value of 10. And we check if obj1 is equal to obj2, and if obj1 is equal to obj3. Now you might be saying, okay, these are all the same, so they should all be equal. But actually we get true and then false. So obj1 and two are equal, but obj1 and three are not. You might be thinking, okay, this has to do with strict equality. So if we do two equal signs instead, we get true and true, but no, we still get true and false. So what's happening here is obj1 and obj2 are the same object. obj3 has the same value, but it is a different object. So whenever we do equality operators with objects, it's not looking at the values in those objects at all. It's looking to see, are they references to the exact same object? which in this case, obj2 and 1 are, but obj3 is not, so thus we get false here. Object properties in JavaScript are a little bit strange. So here we have an object with a first name and it is set to Connor, and then we log out object.firstName. Pretty self-explanatory, this should be Connor. But of course, no, it's a reference error, name is not defined. So what exactly is happening here? Well, we do object dot, and then we get first dash name but dash is subtraction. So actually we do object.first, which is undefined, minus name, which just doesn't exist. So that's a reference error. So that's where we get the error message. So what this means is if you have a dash in your property names, which really you should just avoid dashes in property names, you can't use dot notation. Instead, you need to use this bracket notation with a string, and then we would get Connor. Can you figure out what this sort of tricky JavaScript promise code is going to output and why? So first we have a promise, which is resolved to five. And then we have promise two, which is set equal to promise dot then taking in a callback function, which logs out some value and returns that value times two. Then we log out promise two. Then we call the then method of promise two. And this takes in a callback function again, which logs out some value times two. So the result of all of this is going to be a pending promise and then five and then 20. So what exactly happens? Well, first we have a promise, which is fulfilled with a value of five. And then we have promise two, and we have promise.then, which runs when the previous promise is fulfilled. So this code should be running, but it's not going to run immediately because promises are asynchronous, and essentially it just has to wait for the call stack to be empty before this code can actually run. So we continue on. We log out promise two, and promise two is still pending because this hasn't been able to run yet, so we haven't returned yet. And then we have promise two, which we call the then method on, and this then method is going to take in this callback function, which is going to execute once promise two is no longer pending, which it still is. So now we are done executing all of this code, and only now, because there's nothing else happening, can this callback actually run, which is going to log out the value. And the value is going to be this promise's value that it was actually fulfilled to, which is going to be five. So this is logging out five, and then we return 10. And now this promise is fulfilled, meaning that this then callback can also run and it is going to have a value of 10 from this value times two. So we log out 10 times two, which is going to be 
20. Okay, so that's the last of these challenges. Let me know how you did and if you want to see more of these and then watch this video next.